I am so excited to be talking today with Erilyn Wiederhald. She is a super talented designer and I first met her at Certex a few years back. Um, I wanted to interview Erilyn today because I've been following her Instagram for a while and because we know that social media is always the truth, <laughs> Erilyn is clearly like working all the time. She is such a working artist. She's always working on something new, showing through her stories. And I love her like super marketable style and different talents and styles that she can do. So welcome, Erilyn. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yay. Um, so first, if you could give me like a little background, how did you get started working for yourself? Did you start, you know, right off working for yourself or did you work in house or tell me your kind of artistic journey? Yeah, so I actually dove right into freelance, um, which I don't always recommend, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Um, when I was in college, um, surface design, pattern design, licensing was not was not a subject. Um, I had no idea. And I know now a lot of schools are teaching that. And I think that is absolutely amazing. And yeah. there's so many online resources to learn it as well, which is incredible. But at the time, um, it I went to Ringling College of Art and Design, um, which is you know a wonderful school. And my major was illustration, but it was more classic, you know, editorial children's book illustration, um, which is great because it taught us so many different styles. Mm. Um, but with that, when I graduated, I was very dead set on going into children's book illustration. Um, and it's still a huge passion of mine for sure. But I, um, my husband, my now husband, I was with him when I was in college and he got a job offer in Orlando. Um, and, you know, <laughs> with freelance and illustration in general, when, when one uh, partner has like a really good job offer, you go for that one. Right? Yeah, uh -huh, for sure. So I dove right into freelance because I knew that I would be able to go with him anywhere. Um, if I had a chance to take like a, a factory job or like a nice paid job, I 100% would have taken it. I just didn't, it didn't really work out for me mm -hmm. um, because I think. I would have loved having that experience and like, yeah. you know, working in a company, there's just so many skill sets that you would learn on the job, but I went right into freelance. So it was quite a struggle for a while, especially because I was really working on just editorial and children's book illustration. I still didn't know about the world of surface design. Um, and I had a few jobs, like I had some children's book projects. I got um, uh, my first, my very first project out of school was for the Los Angeles Times, which is really exciting. Oh, wow. But, you know, it was, it was a struggle um, finding my own projects and doing the invoicing. My brain is just not wired for that. Mm -hmm. And it was tough. And a friend of mine was working for Carter's doing baby designs. Nice. And she, um, she actually was like, you know, I think you should like look into pattern design. Like it's really fun and your style would fit it really well. So I just did a 180 and I completely switched gears and you know, learned everything I could. And she helped me learn repeats. And I just kind of created a portfolio for that. And at about the same time, um, oh, and I should mention too, that I had gone through a couple children's book agents um, and it just didn't work out, you know, yeah. a, a year went by and they didn't find me any work. And, um, and I know like the agent artist journey um, is, can be a slow start, you know, especially mm -hmm. with, if you're like joining the company, but um it just didn't work out. And so I was getting quite discouraged about this point. But when I created that pattern portfolio, this is about the time that Pink Light Studio was brand new in the industry. And mm -hmm. um, the same friend recommended that I, um, that I email them, you know, see if they're looking for any artists. And I just, I got so lucky with the timing, to be honest, because I look back at my first like patterns that I designed and they're absolutely terrible. Oh. I mean, I just, <laughs> We've all and been guess, there. <laughs> know, we, all, we all look at that, our first art, right? But mm -hmm. it was, this, the timing could not have been better because Pink Light was new and she was on the hunt for someone that could do children's designs. And of course, with my, my children's book background, um, it was perfect. So I signed out with Pink Light and that was about 2011. And so ever since then, it's been, it's been really good. Amazing. Um, and I just fell in love with surface design and, and I'm almost a wee bit jealous that it's being taught now and <laughs> there's Instagram and there's Pinterest, you know, it's, it's incredible because I didn't have these resources then. I think that it's easier. It's a little bit easier to find surface pattern design now. However, it's still like pretty niche. Like we think because we're in the industry and because we follow other artists and because whatever that it's like everywhere, but still every story I hear from students, like, you know, who are getting started are, are like, I just, 
realize like, wait a second, this is a thing. And it's like, it, it's everyone, everyone has that same like light bulb moment of like, yeah. I've been around patterns my whole life, but suddenly yeah. I just realized someone has to design them. It never know? clicks. It is so funny. It's the, and I was the same way. And it's the same when you're telling, you know, family and friends what you do for a living. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love them so much, but like, sometimes it's hard to get through and you're like, okay, so you know, you buy wrapping paper, you know, that, that, that yeah. Person, and then it's like, right? oh, that's so cool. What a cool job. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, of course we all hear that. And it's like, well, you know, it is cool, but it's also, yeah. you know, it's still, still yeah. has its, you know, well, it's, it's funny. And it's, it's amazing how much I fell in love with it because, you know, I had this like very romantic idea about being a children's book illustrator. Like mm. I'll go into the store and I'll see my book on the shelf and, oh, everything will be wonderful. But it, you know, it's such a tough industry to get into. Mm. Um, and like I said, I still have that passion and, you know, hopefully someday that'll work out but um now I realize that my art is everywhere you yeah. know like I go into Dollar Tree or Walmart or Target and you see it on the shelf and it's it's absolutely thrilling and it's like it's getting into more kids hands you know it is so at it the is. end of the day it's not glamorous and my name is rarely attached to it but but I'm happy because I'm making extra kids smile and that's all that matters <laughs> that's amazing I love that yeah it's you're right because it's it's like uh, you know, when I was growing up, I also, I wanted to be a children's, I wanted to be an author illustrator and because I didn't know about surface pattern design yeah. and um, yeah, you know, I know I have some friends who are, who are, you know, book illustrators and they have their books and they come out like, you know, two times a year and it's like awesome when it comes out and it's awesome when it's in stores, but like, yeah, we have tons of products in stores yeah. at all times. And so um, yeah. And we all know as if you're a service pattern designer and you know that that's like the best feeling, that's what makes the whole thing worth it. It's like, Oh, that, that over there, that's some, my store. I was just at, um, Michael's picking out some like supplies for Halloween stuff. And I took my, um, my four-year-old and we were in the fabric section. Michael's now has a fabric section and a couple of my patterns are there. And so I was like, oh, you know what, mom? Because I always say, mommy's an artist. Mommy does this. And they have they see some of my samples and stuff. But I was like, mom, look, mommy did this one and this one. It's like the video game one that everyone has, like that I'm always, yeah, is everywhere because yeah. it's in like every store and whatever. And my son was like, oh, we have a blanket like that. Oh, you have, I was like, yeah, that's the one. We have all this stuff it's from so it. Cute. Yeah, oh. so it's trying to like make that connection. But sure. hopefully he'll know what surface pattern pattern design is when he grows up. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. You'll have so, a drill at an early age. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, so I talk with a lot of artists who have agents and I have talked with some agents before and I'm always interested in getting people's take on that relationship because, you know, there are definitely um, some people who it really works for and some people who it's just not a fit. And of course it depends on your agent too. It's not, you know, it's all, there's so many uh, factors. So you just said you've been with Pink Light for like about 10 years, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and am I to understand you didn't license on your own before that? Is that I true? I did not. I was right. brand new to surface design, just right. you know, editorial and children's book projects on my own. Right. And that's, that was the same for me in, for when I started with Jewel, I hadn't done any licensing. I had done freelance, like, you know, designing behind the scenes, but that was based on like client briefs and stuff like that, not on just kind of creating yeah. whatever. So what would you say are some of the benefits to having an agent and have you run into any drawbacks? Yeah, um, I will say that I absolutely love having an agent. I'm definitely one of the people that I, I don't think I could survive without an agent. I am beyond impressed with the designers that just do it on their own, whether they started out on their own or they were with an agent and then they left ended on their own. Um, I hate numbers. Like I absolutely, with a fiery passion, I hate numbers. And so if I ever, on the rare time that I do have to do an invoice for some very specific project, it's like pulling teeth for me. Mm. Um, <laughs> so the idea of having to, you know, not only go after my own projects and, and track people down and track down invoices and then, you know, beg for the money. Right. <laughs> Cause of course, like that's an issue too, is, you know, making sure that you're getting your payments um, yeah. and just doing all of that like back business side of things mm -hmm. it's just it's it makes it so unfun for me like I can't do it um I want to be creative and I just want to be able to draw all day long um and fortunately like that's what I have with Pink Light um because except for COVID um 
COVID kind of really shook things up last year and things slowed down. And fortunately it's starting to pick up again, but um, you know, for almost the entire 10 years, I was busy. And so I didn't have to even think about projects coming to my um, doorstep, which is amazing because I could just draw and that's all I want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course the drawback is you, you're, you know, you're taking a cut. So that's obviously a big drawback. Sometimes it's, it's hard not to think about like, Ooh, if I was doing how rich could I be know. if I had 40% or 50% yeah, or 30% exactly. more or whatever, whatever it is. You're like, oh, hang on. You're like, could I do this on my own? And then you have to read one email and you're like, oh no. I can't <laughs> but again, some people are wired for that. And I'm just, I'm beyond impressed um, with the ones that they are. And also I got lucky with my agent. She, Mary Beth is just the sweetest person on earth. Really. Um, I absolutely love her as a, just a human and an agent, but you know, it, it's a two-way relationship with your agent, I think. And I think it's really important to find someone that you're comfortable with because, you know, they are doing a lot for you, but you are also doing a lot for them. It's a, it's a two-way road, right? It really And is. when I was struggling in the beginning, trying to get children's book projects, um, the one agent that I had gotten just, I don't know, she was, she had a very blunt personality. Um, not mean, just I don't know. I need a little more floweriness and mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. a little sugar coating. I get it. Yes, exactly. And, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you've met Mary Beth at one of the shows and she's just, you know, she's such a delight to be around. So it's also, you have to find someone that you like, right? It's yeah. not just find whoever will take you. Um, and it, you know, so finding an agent can definitely be a struggle because you just have to find a good relationship as well. Yeah, totally. It is about the relationship and, and how things can be like, it's communication, right? And, and um, you know, work, working with Julie, Julie is amazing, Julie Newman, um, and she has a lot of agents working with her. And I've worked with various ones, you know, like for various projects and, and contact points. And, you know, there's definitely different styles and there's some that I jive with way better and some that I'm like, mm, yeah, if this was my only agent, I might not be, you know, in love with this. So, it, it, it definitely, you know, you have to be able to talk to them and get the information that you need and not feel like you're bothering them and not feel like, you know, whatever. There's, there's so many different aspects to that. So that's a great point. Um, I'm skipping around a little bit because I'm curious about of my questions, my pre-written questions here. So like, how, can you talk to me about how, so you're saying that you get you all your work is pretty much from um from your agent and as soon as you started it was kind of like off to the races so mm -hmm. that wasn't exactly my experience it's still not really my experience in that you know I had to I was creating a portfolio like when I started I didn't have that much art that was my own art you know it was a lot of stuff that in order to get picked or you know like uh, signed on with Julie I was showing art that I'd done, but some of it was like from my previous jobs or client work or whatever. So it's like, this is the kind of thing I can do, but this isn't like gonna be in my portfolio, right? Um, so I was creating all this new work, um, sort of like just whatever I thought would look cool in the world. And then sh they were going along and trying to find slots for that work um, with their various um, partners and whatnot. Is that basically how you worked as well? Or do you, is it more brief based or can you kind of give me a little like overview of how you, you go back and forth with your agent or especially, you know, as you started? Yeah. Well, as I started, I had, um, you know, pretty much nothing in my portfolio either. It's kind of like you said, like, this is the style and I will start creating artwork. So the licensing part of it was very slow start, very, very slow. It, and I think for everybody it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because you have to create the artwork licensing in general just takes ages. Yes. Um, and it's, it's such a long pay or can be such a long payoff. But you know, if you get the video game design in a bunch of stores, it's wonderful. Apparently. But, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes, it's always, you know, sometimes it's design that you're like, oh, okay. But um, I didn't expect that one to go crazy. But anyways, um, we also do freelance. So we also do some like contract hired projects. And so when I had first started, those were the ones that I started working on right away, um, gotcha. which I love. I absolutely love having a mix. Um, so for Pink Light, and I don't know about other agencies, but we do licensing, of course. We also do outright sales. And then we do have some freelance projects. So there are, you know, some companies that come to her and say, hey, do you have a designer that can do the style? And she, you know, she picks someone 
who is best suited for that. Or we also have times where they see our art and they say, oh, the, you know, Erilyn, I love this style. Can you have her create, you know, penguins eating cake, I don't, you know, something very specific. So mm -hmm. we have those freelance projects. Um, and so I love having that mix since licensing takes so long. Um, you know, like you have to make it and then it has to get picked and then it has to go to a store and the manufacturing and it just takes ages. Yes, um, it takes forever. But, you know, having the freelance and some outright sales just really help kind of get some like immediate funds. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I do like, it. yeah. So that's so interesting. Okay. So this is why people always are like, it, it just, you know, my only experience has been with my current agent and Julie pretty much jewel branding most for the most part they're starting to shift a little bit I think but they're very traditional like licensing only they don't really do freelance um like I said they're starting to shift a little bit there's some projects coming through that are a little bit more of a freelance bent but mostly for the last like eight years it's been all licensing all royalties they rarely do even flat fee licenses sometimes they do but um and buyouts aren't really a thing on their their like agenda either so people come to me and like how do you freelance and have an agent and how is this separate and this is whatever and in fact i even worked for uh, a couple studios design studios um and so i was creating artwork for those design studios that they would sell outright then I had my licensing portfolio. Then I had my freelance clients. So I was, I am and was doing all those things, but not under the one umbrella and not getting that, that work like that. And you know what, when I first was going to get into having an agent, I sort of, I think I was thinking more of the model of what you're talking about. Cause I was sort of like, well, getting an agent is only going to just bring me more work. Like, cause I was struggling to get freelance clients. And so I was like, no matter what, it's going to bring me work. I understood the concept of licensing, but I just sort of was like, no matter what clients and work are coming. Um, but because Jewel is so very like licensing based, it was a very slow process, still is a slow process. Yeah. And so I ended up having to build up my own licensing clients and partner with studios where I sold outright and do all my own different type of thing. So mm -hmm. that's so interesting. And I know, and I, yeah, sorry, you're no, I was just say it's also amazing that you're able to like have the the freelance on the side. We are allowed to, you know, have our own work on the side. I just haven't pursued it as hard as I should. Right, have. right. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, because like, you know, when you're talking about like hating numbers and stuff like that, it's like, I mean, I don't love numbers either, but the freelance stuff is pretty cut and dry, right? I say a rate, yes. they agree to the rate, I charge them for the rate, and usually with freelance work, yeah, they pay you pretty quickly. They already have the art, etc. It's when you get into royalties and you know things being produced a year down the road and the quarterly whatever. That's when things get real complicated, and that's where I'm happy to have an agent. You know. Well, and there's you know there's obviously a drawback to doing um, outright sales as well. Like I'm not I can't speak for all the artists, but I do think that there are some that prefer licensing only. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense because, you know, especially the, you know, the, the watercolor artists and the hand painted artists, you spend hours and hours on one design, you know, you might not want to just sell it outright because you're losing that copyright, you're losing the, you know, you're just, you're losing it, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be out there and you make instant money and that's great, but it's not for everyone either. And yeah. so I do think there are some artists on our team that, um, and, and Mary Beth always says, like, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Just let me know. Um, because, you know, it's, the idea is that down the line, you could certainly make more money from something, you know, cause you can license it out to different areas um, and you just, you hold on to the design forever. So, um, so it is interesting. So I love it all, honestly. I just like, yeah, it, I think, I think what's why, you know, why restrict, you know, my, um, like I said, Jewel is starting to uh, sort of like do some different things and they did approach me about selling things outright potentially. Um, recently and at first I was like oh I don't know I might want to keep my copyright because my ideas I always I didn't have a problem with it before then lately I've been getting like you know trying to figure out what the best way is to like maximize whatever and then I was like no I, I don't care I, I don't sell it because honestly so much of the stuff in my licensing portfolio is is just sitting around it hasn't been licensed I have so much art that hasn't been licensed yes and yeah. 
And so it's like, why wouldn't I sell it or whatever? Because at least it's being used, you know, those, obviously there are those random pieces like my video game art that is just, you know, I can use over and over, but most of my portfolio is not an over and over type of thing. So unfortunately, like, I mean, I would love it if it was, but, um, you know, I have maybe four or five collections that have had like multiple different product licenses. Um, but then I have those that just like never even got a contract. So you just, yeah, you just have to kind of be diverse about it. And so then you have, you sometimes are creating work directly for clients in a freelance capacity. And then sometimes when you, when you aren't doing that, then you kind of have time to make your own like new ideas. Is that, is that basically... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if I'm not working on a project, we're just working on um, collections for the portfolio. And like you said, I have tons of art that is just sitting around as well. I mean, thousands, I forget what number I made it up to recently, but I think I'm over, I think I'm at like 2,500 <laughs> designs. Amazing. You know, obviously well, there's like dots and stripes and yeah. things in there, of course. Right. But you know, and so a lot of that is sitting and it sounds like monumental, but not everything I do is, is going to get licensed or sold. Um, and also, you know, if it's like a Santa or, or if it's something that is clearly a trend that is going to go away soon, like I am happy to sell it. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. get that out the door. Mm-hmm. I don't need to put on to that. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, you know, saying how many designs you have is, is, is one thing that I, one of the reasons that I really wanted to talk to you because I feel like, yeah, you are just like working, like you are like designing constantly. And that's so like admirable to me because, um, you know, I, now I split my time with a lot of different things. And so like those people who are still like really, who are currently really in it is just um, amazing. And I think it's another, uh, you know, another indication that you know you are making your living all from from licensing and from from freelance and all from art and but you create so much art right mm-hmm. that's the thing that's the thing it's like i think people get into licensing thinking and i did this too like okay i'm going to create a portfolio which is going to have maybe 20 collections maybe 40 collections as the years go on and that's going to pay my bills for the rest of my life or something. Yeah. <laughs> but you are constantly making new art. I know from watching your stories and stuff like that, you're yeah. constantly making new art. You're constantly creating something new and, and all that, you know, work and churn is what makes you a successful working artist. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to say like, you know, quantity over quality, but uh, you know, sometimes it's true. Sometimes well, you know. and you're doing quality work. Don't <laughs> don't sell yourself short. You have gorgeous, you. gorgeous work. <laughs> but you. just you know, I mean, I know yeah, what you're saying. Like, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. And I, yeah, I think that is a really good point, though, that I never really thought about. It is kind of it's fun, and I love it, obviously. And you know, sometimes when you talk about what you do, people are like, "That's so amazing. That's so cool. I'd love to get into that." Um, you know, and it, but it is also hard, obviously, you really have to have that motivation and that drive and, you know, we don't clock out, right, which is sometimes hard. So when I, I went on a trip, I know you saw the stories, but I was in California doing a road trip with my husband and, um, and it was wonderful, but I got a freelance project um, and I could not say no to it, you know, like, mm. It physically causes causes me pain to, <laughs> to turn out a project because we were going to be gone for 12 days. And I was like, that's a long time to not be doing any work. So, oh, you know, no. I, I ran it by him and he was like, oh, absolutely. Bring that with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, at the end, you know, we'd go hiking to waterfalls or we explore a town at the end of the night I'd go back to the hotel room and I would do some work because, you know, we just, we don't really have someone at you know, at the office taking our hours or we don't have someone to fill in for us. So it's a wonderful job and working for yourself is amazing, but there really isn't like an end of the day. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that's something that I'm definitely working towards. And that's, you know, one reason that I've started diversifying more. I'm skipping it. We're just having a conversation here. I'm not really even getting into the question. I got to get back to it, but um, but that's one reason. (laughs) Yeah. It's because, you know, um, I want to, you know, not take my laptop on my vacations you know what I mean and and I know that you know I interviewed Nicole Tamarin a couple months ago and she earns all her money from licensing uh through her agent and yeah she just works you know a lot and and she's always got these deadlines and everything and it's 
it's super admirable, but it's also like, girl, you need to chill out. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say that to you too, knowing that you did a project on your vacation. I was like, girl, yeah. you gotta chill out. You don't really... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I totally yeah. get it. I a hundred percent get it. There's no, um, there's no judgment, you know, it's just, okay, yeah. it's just, that is, that is kind of, you know, how the reality of the business, unless you like set real strict boundaries and you're willing yeah. to not make that money for a little while when you, you know, when you take the time off. Well, also just a quick note on that, you know, I don't want your viewers to just think I'm like some superwoman. I don't have children yet. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge factor. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm, my husband works at the office and I'm at home. So like, what else am I going to do except print that loss at work, right? So that's obviously, you know, someday that's going to be a big factor that's going to change. Yeah, that's true. Cause before I had kids, it's like, I don't have a ton of hobbies either. So it's like, eh, you know, be the weekend. And I'd be like, well, I could just draw some, I could just get ahead on Monday's work. And like, it was not, you know, it was drawing. It's fun. It's not like, it's like laborious. Um, But then once I had kids, it was like, oh, I'm running around on the weekends with them. And so even if it's like nap time and I can sit and do work, I'm like, oh no, I need some time for me. So um, yeah, kids definitely uh, sort of added in a default boundary for me, like, because that takes so much energy in itself. So that's a good, great point. Um, So let's see, we talked about this. Um, so can you take me through like a typical week in your business? Like what's your workload looking like on average? It sounds like, you know, you've got a mix of projects. What kind of, like, give me a typical kind of overview of your days. Yeah. Um, so now, so like I said, COVID really slowed things down for a bit. Um, and I think it did for most of the artists in the industry. Um, so that was, that was a rough time, if I'm being mm. super honest. Um, yeah. It was a rough but it has been getting back on track, which is really great. And, and freelance projects have been coming back, which is awesome. And clients are looking again, which is so great. So now that we're kind of back, um, I would say I usually have at least one freelance project going on for the week, unless there's just, you know, there are certain times of the year that they're just not looking. Um, but lately I have like one freelance project at least going on through the week that I have to work on a deadline for. Um, And then I'm always working on a new collection. Um, For our agency, we are, you know, required to have at least two new collections per month. Um, And, you know, collection is like a few placements and a few, you know, coordinating patterns. Um, And so I'm always working on at least a couple of those. And then we have a lot of, um, you know, through Pink Light, you know, we have a lot of clients that'll say, we need this specific art that we're looking for. So we have a lot of call outs too. So anytime a call out comes out, I try to hop on that. So there's no schedule at all. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of doing what I can. It's um, just, it's just looking at your deadlines and yeah, exactly. Just kind of keep in. track on deadlines. Absolutely no schedule at all. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's, yeah. So to, for people who don't know what a call out is, I mean, you kind of said it, but just for a little more I- information, A lot of times retailers have their own trends. They have their own, you know, they've started to put together their line and then they realize they're missing something that it, and so they have these like certain holes in in their lineup of what they're going to be creating. And so they reach out to agencies and potentially individual artists. I'm not really sure, but we get a lot of call outs through our art agency as well, um, where they say here, you know, here are, let's say Michael's top spring trends for Easter and you get like a trend board and whatever. And it's like, we're looking for art that's going to work well on um, like wooden signs or something like that. Um, Sometimes less specific, sometimes more specific, but um, you know, and so that gives you some real direction of like, okay, so I'm not just designing like whatever I think is cool today. It's like, I'm doing something Eastery. I'm doing something based on these colors. I'm doing something that's going to work on a sign okay, so it's probably going to have wording and blah, blah, blah. And so that get, gets you kind of off to the races yeah. for figuring out what you need to, or what you yeah. should create. So it's so great. And obviously it's not a, like a guaranteed sale, but, you know, being able to design what they are looking for is obviously going to increase your chances of getting a sale. Exactly. And yeah, so yeah, in those cases, it's not a free, in freelance, it's like, we need you to create something based on this and 
we're going to take what you make us basically with some revisions potentially, but with, with a call out. Yeah, exactly. You're still kind of putting it into a pot of other people who have done this yeah. call out as well uh, and making choices. But if they don't pick it, it's not a waste because then it's very on trend. It's perfect mm -hmm. for a certain product. And so there are definitely other retailers or other um, manufacturers who could yeah. go along and pick it up. And it's also good for like sparking imagination. Okay, I, sure. The only, like, I would do more call outs, except for I feel like ours are always like a two day turnaround. Are yours super tight turnarounds? Cause I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, I can't see you're working all the time on art and, and you're fat. I know you're fat. I am fast too, but I think I've been slowing down my old age. I don't know. But um, like, so I'm, you know, some, it's like, I can't, I feel like, oh, I don't have the brain power to like do that in two days. <laughs> yeah. Fast. Yeah, it's hard. I, I feel like a lot of them have been so tight lately. I haven't made it, but yeah, it's good motivation, you know. Like if you're laying in the couch, relaxing, having a me day, and you're like, mm, this looks yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so that is. Oh, and the other question I want to ask you is sort of relation to freelance. I want to see kind of compare notes on freelance because I think people get a. Uh, misunderstanding of what I really do when I'm freelancing. And I'm curious how you work. Um, like for my freelance work, sometimes, but not that often, am I really asked to just like, will you design a pattern? You know, like it's almost never like, we need, we're doing a, a, you know, some like a baby clothing and we need a fruit print. And can you design a fruit print in these colors? It's usually like, we're doing, you know, a range of notebooks and we have this cover already designed, but we want you to take some bits of this cover and make coordinating pages on the inside. And like, it's like, it's, it's sometimes remixing other people's artwork. It's sometimes creating my own artwork, but then using a lot of the elements to create other bits and pieces. And, you know, there's a certain amount of like production work involved in that. I'm not just, yeah, like, I'm just gonna make this pattern and then I'll be done. It's sort of more like, all right, how is this pattern gonna fit on the onesie? And it needs to be like, I need to make sure that there's something in the center and like a, a little bit more like arranging and engineering. Uh, have you found that? It's so funny. No, almost the opposite. <laughs> I don't want to like burst your bubble. No, but no, no. I'm just curious. I know exactly what you're talking about that. I have done a couple of those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and for me, it was odd. I was like, oh, so I'm just like, I felt very intrusive. Like, oh, working on other people's else's artwork. art, right? It felt very, like, just, it felt very weird. Um, and like, it was like naughty, like naughty. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> but um, no, I've had a couple of those. And I know I have a friend that, that was all of her freelance projects, you know, as, and at least the ones that she was telling me about, like, she had a ton of those, just like working on like onesies and like, yeah, taking art and like putting in the repeat. Uh, which is great because you know money is money and a job is a job but yeah um i don't know for whatever reason most of the projects i've gotten is just creating the art cool that's cool yeah i have it's a mix it's a mix and i do a lot of um like gift bags and wrapping paper so sometimes that stuff is straight up the art but even with the gift bags it's like create the cover but then also the gift tag and the gusset which is oh, yeah. the side and then the top lip and stuff like that so you're doing these coordinating yeah. and you're putting it into a template rather than just like I'm just drawing whatever pretty thing and handing you yeah. a file you know yeah we do get those I love those yeah I love the gift mm -hmm. tags so fun yeah. <laughs> um yeah interesting yeah I have yeah I have a whole range and and one of my clients that I do a lot of work for yeah they're like a stationary and gift bag company um you probably I'm sure you've done work with them too and um and it's like they have to get things approved and whatever it's always these big you know they create a lot of art and then only you know half of it gets approved let's say yeah, and then it's like they come back to you to change things up or whatever it is. And so it's all just kind of like this ongoing thing rather than um, a very definitive, draw me a Santa and call it a day, you know? Yeah. So interesting. Um, all right. So I love trends and you, my friend, are a very trend forward girl based on all oh, the art that I have seen. Um, I think Pink Light in general, you know, a lot of your artists, uh, your fellow artists are very, you know, Pink Light in general is a very trend forward um, 
uh, agency. Um, and you know, everything I see you do is like, I'm like, yes, yes. Right on trend, right. What's happening with the gift and stationary market. Um, so it's, it sounds like that some of that is based on, uh, like call outs and briefs maybe. Um, but for your self-motivated, like your, your new collections that you're creating for your licensing portfolio, um, where, you know, do you have any hot tips on kind of like keeping up with trends, uh, or, or just like sort of how you, how you stay current? Yeah. I mean, I am, I am very spoiled with my agency. Like you said, they are very trend forward. And, um, not only are we getting client call outs, but they also do weekly trends, you know, our, oh, our weekly. Agents, yes. Yeah. Our wow. agents and assistants are, are always sending new trends. Um, so there's that. So I am very spoiled with that, but as, as far as my own stuff, I'm always looking as well. Um, and my biggest hot tip is just to keep your eyes open, you know, everywhere you go, um, always have your eyes open. And if you can travel, um, because mm -hmm. I find it so fascinating. Um, since we don't have kids yet, you know, we've been able to travel to different countries, which, you know, I'm very grateful for, but it's, it's so interesting seeing what's over there. Mm. Um, and I feel like some areas get trends quicker than others. Um, you, you know, just being in the stores, looking at fashion, like the runway, mm -hmm. um, looking at magazines, a lot of these trends really start to kind of mix together, right? Like, you know, like the plant lady vibe right mm -hmm. it's you know it's yeah. it's like a movement it's like a vibe right and now it's like bleeding into artwork yeah. um and then same thing with you know and kind of looking at like current events and things that are just happening in the world those start bleeding into trends as well for instance like covid everyone was focused on being home and being cozy and being comfortable and just kind of like you know inner happiness mm -hmm. and now that started bleeding into um like christmas designs like stay home stay cozy Mm. Um, so I find that so fascinating. So honestly, the hot tip is just keep your ears and eyes yeah. open. Um, it gets easier though. I will say, cause people yeah. who are new to it are like, I don't, what, how do you even know this stuff? Yeah. And, but as you do, I mean, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and same with me. And it's like, you start to see the patterns a lot yeah. easier than, than at first. Um, yeah. So, well, and you know, of course, like, I'm sure you, you always talk about this, right? Like the animal, like there's always like the trending what's animal. The animal? <laughs> and it's our favorite thing. It's like my favorite thing to talk about. Like, Ooh, what's going to be the next animal? Cause for a while it was owls and then it was foxes for so long. And now mm. we're in this never ending llama, right? <laughs> llama and sloth situation. Yes. Um, though owls are starting to come back, even though owls are so like 2006 or whatever, they're, st they're starting to like come, yeah. you know, they're creeping back in. I don't know if it's just Halloween vibes or what, but yeah, I've been maybe, seeing owls, yeah. but can we geek out about trends then for a little bit? What have you been seeing for, I mean, no, if you don't have anything off the top of your head, I, well, that's oh, fine. No, but like, what are you um, thinking about for animals? Cause you know, I haven't been seeing as many animals. It's all been self-care and plants yeah. and self-care, <laughs> mental health, you know, yeah, home vibe. Yeah. The mental yeah, health, cozy, yeah. all that stuff, like what you were yeah. saying. And then the whole cottage core thing, which is like the, yes. you know, all the little wildflowers and the like mushrooms and definite, like so much like seventies vibe is still so, so, so oh, like homemade vibe. macrame, all that, all that thing. But what are you even seeing for animals? Do you have anything? So animals mainly. So last our text, right. The one that was in person. Mm -hmm. Did we meet then? Is that the Surtex we got? I think meet? that must have been the. I mean, I was there. I don't know if I met you that one or the one before that, but yeah, that before one. Before COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, February. Um, and it was so nice meeting you, by the way. <laughs> Very related. I'm glad. I, we well, I had never. I I'm so glad. I just stopped by the Pink Light booth because I know a couple of the artists, and then you were there, and you're like, "Hi," and I'm like, "This is your work. This is your. Work. You're amazing." And then I was like, "Well, I have to follow you now." I'm a stalker. Well, we became Instagram friends, but um. <laughs> So that last Surtex, this was right after, I feel so awful saying this, but this was right after the Australian wildfires, right? Mm, yeah. And I had this thought in my head, that like, oh gosh, like koalas are going to become the next animal mm. because we were all so concerned. I mean, obviously. About the so wildlife, yeah. Yeah, it was just so, the whole world was so focused on these wildfires because it was absolutely just awful. Devastating, like, yeah. Devastating. Um. But my artist brain turned on and I said, koala is going to be the next animal. So I, I, and I feel so awful about this because I did some koala patterns and they sold right away. 
Um, That's, and you I don't need to feel it. awful about seeing trends and, you know, it's not like you were like drawing <laughs> pictures of them being burnt up or something horrible. Like you, that, there's nothing you were, you were so honoring sorry, the you koalas. Guilty, yeah. <laughs> you were honoring them. You don't need to feel bad yeah. about having no, a good I premonition. I have, they're the cutest animal. And so I have actually, I've been seeing them a lot now lately. So yeah. I don't know. That's, I, that's my hot tip is just pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention to what's you know, and try to get yeah. your like uh, fortune teller vibe mm. going on, right? If you're like, well, I think the thing about trends that I really like um, is that if you're paying attention to them, you can see the evolution, right? Mm-hmm. Everything comes from some like so. Some of the trends that came out in let's say 2015 are still going but they're a different version right so we saw like fortune teller vibes mysticism like then like constellations and zodiac and like it's like everything you know then crystals and then like you know um now I don't even know you know what the extension of that is but like I feel like celestial is still kind of doing its thing and and zodiac is getting warm again so it's like it's all kind of like to get, it's just like slight variations each season. And then it kind of evolves a little further and further away. And what was once cactuses became all succulents, became plants, all plants became like specifically house plants became, you know, whatever else. Yeah. Who knows what's next, but like, it's all, you know, one little step forward each season or two seasons, you know? So. And you know, um, another thing that I, f- I feel like really affects the trend sometimes are like really popular shows so mm. I remember after Game of Thrones dragons were really mm. yeah dragons. yeah they did I mean requests so that's an interesting one especially being like a children's designer because you're like oh I'm designing a <laughs> yeah. dragon yeah good. you can't make it like wh- well that's true you know when I was working for the gap it was like walking dead and I did do a for Halloween oh. I did a zombies a zombies one you know it was it was cute zombies yeah. but yeah. It, you know it was it's appropriate. funny yeah it <laughs> because the adults right the adults are buying these clothes or they're buying these toys and they're the ones that are watching these shows and I'm sure I'll be the same way like I'm going to be geeking out over you know something I'm like, oh yeah I'm totally gonna make my kid wear this <laughs> yeah totally totally um so we've talked about I'm like we're like going on and on here <laughs> try to try to keep it shorter but um All right. So what are your thoughts about diversifying your income? Because it sounds like you have, you're straight up all art all the time and that is working for you. Um, Have you thought about adding, you know, like, do you do any like print on demand or any of that kind of stuff or have an Etsy shop or, or where are you at on that, that uh, idea? So I, I used to have an Etsy shop and then when things kind of just went crazy with pink light I closed it because I I wasn't able to keep up with it um so my thoughts on that are that diversifying your income is incredibly important so do as I say not as I do um because I do that a lot too (laughs) don't pay attention to what I'm actually doing (laughs) it's not good it's not good right um and and that's what COVID taught me is when the industry hit hard um, and everything slowed down and like freelance wasn't coming through, um, it, that, you know, that was obviously like very concerning. And I started trying to like ramp up my Instagram again. And I started, um, I do paint as well. I'm a you know, watercolorist. I just, I never really get to do it for art because we do vector for almost everything. Yeah. Um, but I do love painting. So I kind of brought that at that. Um, and I was doing like, commission portraits for like pets and, just designs. I'm sure you saw some of that coming through in my Instagram, mm-hmm. but um, so that's a little bit what that was, was just trying to bring in some funds um, while surface design kind of slowed down since, you know, I just, I never really thought about it getting hit by the economy. Um, my husband is an interior designer for hotels and he, you know, his job is easily hit by an economy, right? So if people aren't traveling and they're not going to hotels, that's obviously going to like trickle down and affect the architects and the design, um, the designers. So it never really occurred to me that it would happen with surface design Mm. because I'm like, oh, people are always going to want gift bags and cards, right? But it was a weird time. So um, I have actually been thinking about diversifying my income, bringing back my Etsy shop, doing, um, you know, downloadable sales, like, you know, just creating vector art, especially with how fast I've gotten. I'm like, why am I not creating, you know, little succulent vectors that people can put into their stationery? 
Mm. So it's something that I think is very important and that you should do. And <laughs> well, no pressure. Don't feel. <laughs> I mean, no, I know. you know, it's, it's, I understand why, why I definitely understand why people give that advice. Um, but, but I also do, you know, I think that artists who are starting, I mean, you're not starting out, but just in general, artists who are starting out feel this pressure because they hear this advice all the time, diversify, diversify, diversify. Here's a hot tip from me. <laughs> here's a hot tip you can't diversify if you're not good at any of the things yet like if you haven't built up one stream of income don't try to do six it's never going to work you know like you so you have a very stable very good thing going with your art and now is a great time to start adding in something new because you've got the other part on lock but people mm -hmm. who don't have any freelance clients don't have any licensing work um, don't have any like followers for a print on demand shop, um, don't like know that much to teach or whatever your other income sources yeah. could be like you, that is so hard to do to start four businesses at yeah. once rather than it's start really one business or one to two, because like, so for me, I always, I did think of like freelance and licensing as two separate things. And because they're not through the same, you know, funnel of my agent. And so I said, I'm, I told people for a long time, you know, I'm doing a half and half thing. Like I'm doing, I'm building up my freelance career. And when I don't have client work, I work on my licensing and then, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so once that was strong, that's when I said, okay, well now I'm ready to add teaching into the, like more seriously add teaching into this. Um, mm -hmm. but when you're, yeah, when you're just starting, there's, there's no way to, to try to start six businesses at once. It's mm -hmm. just not going to work. So, yeah. well, I mean, so I guess some people, you never know some yeah. people are yeah, some know, people. special <laughs> magical miracles, but I, yeah. my advice to anyone who's like new to the thing. And, and I think that people, the reason people, you know, do this when they're starting is because they're not making money. So it's like, what yeah. can I do to make money? It's like, Rabbit, I'll try yeah. anything. I have these skills and, and I get it because I was doing that too when I first started and it's you know it's it's really a struggle to build up any of those streams if you're not concentrating on any of them that is a really good point because I feel like that's why I did well at first with well once I signed out with pink light you know, they just like dove in head first I was just excited to have work you know I just said yes to everything um mm -hmm. so yeah that is a really good point yeah cool um let's see so what um, advice would you give to someone who's just getting into this field, has a bunch of cool patterns, but isn't sure what to do next? You know, my, I mean, my advice is to not get discouraged and not to give up um, and just to, to try, you know, look at the agencies that you admire um, and the artists that they have and, you know, reach out to them, obviously, if you're looking for an agent. Um, you know, learn all the resources that you can, you know, like your classes and your interviews and just like read everything. Um, I mean, I feel like that's really basic advice, <laughs> not yeah, like, but that's not get discouraged tired. is an important one. It, it's, it's hard to just, you know, like, oh, okay, I won't, but, <laughs> but it's true. You have to be, you have to be resilient. That's just the thing. Yes. You know, it's I not think it happen right away. Right. Just, yeah. Um, I want to relate this like starting, you know, your own like service pattern career to, you know, I think we, we think about it as new artists or as people who are just starting their freelance career as I was when I, after I left my in-house jobs, we think about it as not that big of a deal as far as starting a business, right? Cause it's like, we just need our art skills, which we already have or we're building up or whatever and then we need clients that's like the two things and we can work from home we have our computers already we can do it's like it's not like a major investment into your future mm -hmm. but if you were starting a restaurant or uh, my sister-in-law started her own dental practice or mm -hmm. any other business that you might start requires so much like startup money time uh, risk taking, etc., and like we don't think about all that stuff because we can start pretty like we don't have yeah. to spend a lot of money to get started. We don't have to, you know, we're not putting like our savings on the line 
we, except for the fact that if we're going full time, you know, we might be using our savings until we start earning money, but we're not like spending money on huge equipment or anything like that for the most part. So, but any business takes time to be profitable. Any business that, you know, dental practice or a restaurant or whatever, you know, it takes time for those things to start turning a profit. And, and um, you know, we kind of forget that and want things to happen in like oh, three, because how hard is I could get a client tomorrow and I could be started and that would be great, but it still might take a year. And that is just kind of the reality of starting your own business, right? I got so discouraged, um, like right before I signed on with Pink Light, like I was very close to just quitting and just throwing it in. Um, and I was at that time, I was working, um, I was working at Apple, mm. um, you know, as one of the specialists at Apple. And it was, a, if, you, if you have to work retail, it's like the best. I love it. You know, it's a, awesome. just a huge family and I absolutely love it, but I never want to have to sell a phone again. <laughs> but, you know, at the time I was working at Apple, um, because, you know, obviously it's not fair to my husband. I, you know, I needed to earn some income and, yeah. but it was really stressful because, you know, I'd, I'd be on the sales floor all day and I was exhausted and I'd come home and then I would do drawings and, you know, and I was constantly reaching out to agents and reaching out, trying to find clients. And I had a mailing list, you know, and I was doing so much trying to get my illustration career started. And I mean, so close to quitting, especially because I had gone through those two agents and they never found me work. And I'm like, well, my art is terrible. And so like, why am I even in this? Um, mm -hmm. And, and like I said, I got lucky with the timing with signing on to pink light. Cause I just, I was so close. Yeah. So, I mean, not getting discouraged. Um, and I know so many artists are working like retail jobs or service industry jobs or like an office job. Um, you know, unless you've got like a production job, you know, like <laughs> working for it, like, that's amazing. If you get one of those, if you get an offer, you take it. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause like I said, you get all that experience, but you know, so many of us starting out are working these jobs that we're just miserable at, but you know, you just have to keep up with it and just know that's not going to happen right away. And if it does happen right away, that's amazing. Like, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I know I hear the stories of people who are like, Oh, I just, you know, and I'm like, wait, what? You just, you just quit your job and suddenly had cool. like full-time client work. Okay. Cool. Soft, cool, cool, but cool. That's fine. <laughs> cool. 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 I uh, yeah. won't go cry about this. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, no, I know it's, it's, it, it can be a slog, but you know, obviously then you get to be in a place where, yeah, you go to Walmart and you go to Target and you get to see the stuff and you're making your money and it, it is, it's wonderful and so worth it. Speaking of money, let's go to our bonus question, which as you know, if you've watched any of my other interviews, I am obsessed with money. <laughs> And I always want to know, you know, trying to get the most like up-to-date information on, you know, how people have transitioned their career and related to their income and all that stuff. So bonus question for you is how long did it take you to make a full-time living as an artist? Like, I guess once you s tell me a little bit, like maybe before you signed on and then after you signed on with Pink Light, if you have... Yeah. Below, you'll find the link to access my Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit, and you can access that for free. And in that toolkit, besides all kinds of templates and useful stuff, there are also a ton of bonus videos, including this one. So Erilyn talks about how she got started in her transition and her income and how long it took her to go full time. So check that out below. Everyone needs to go follow you, check out your work. I will leave all your links in the description. So go follow Erilyn. Erilyn, thank you so much for joining me. I have loved learning more about how you work with your agent and all this other information that you've shared with us today. So thank you so much. Of course, thanks for having me. So super fun. <laughs> If you want more guidance on your creative career, head to courses.elizabethsilver.com in order to check out what I have on offer. If you love learning about surface pattern design and creative business, be sure to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at esilverdesign. Also, I would be super grateful if you shared this channel with your surface pattern friends.